It's one of your most important organs, and you don't give it nearly enough attention. And men especially don't talk about it enough. No, weirdo, we're talking about your skin. Today, we'll share some simple things you can start doing now to take better care of your skin so you can stay healthy. And so you don't end up looking like a leather suitcase. Coming up today on The Fit Mess. Take a look at your butt and look at the skin on your butt because that's, for most people, been covered their entire lives. And look at the skin that's been exposed, your neck, your chest, your face, your arms, your hands. That is sun damage because your butt aged just like everything else. Sure. That's sun damage. That's Chris Gibson. He's a skincare expert author of Acne Free in Three Days and host of the popular Chris Gibson Live show on YouTube. Today, we'll talk to him about how you can protect your skin so you not only look great, but stay safe, especially during the sunny summer season. But first, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Zach. We've spent years pushing ourselves to learn more about our own physical, emotional, and mental health and picked up a few coaching certificates along the way. But really, we're two guys who got sick of our own shit and started making changes to be healthier, happier, and live more meaningful lives. And each week, we talk to world-class experts with advice to help you do the same. Zach, in all the years we've known each other and done this show, skincare is something that I don't think we've ever actually talked about. Mostly because we, and probably a lot of men, don't do shit about our skin until we're tired and old and leathery dudes and it's too late. And all of a sudden, we're trying to turn back time and look like we're 25 when we're pushing 50. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been moisturizing for weeks now. For, oh, for weeks. Congratulations. You've, you're you're well, really, actually months. You're ahead of the curve on this one. You're, so you're taking care of your skin, are you? Actually, I am. But to your point, I didn't start taking care of it until a problem developed. It's actually been like seven years, but I just have a case of eczema on my right foot. Okay. And it was never that bad. Like my you know, skin was just a little dry. Didn't bother me too much. But like in the last year, for some reason, it just like kicked into overdrive to the point where like a couple of my toenails fell off. I know Jesus. it's TMI. So like I had to like start moisturizing my foot and, and doing all that stuff. And my toenails have grown back for the most part, but it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like what happened? God, like I hit damn. past 40 and my body was like, Hey, here's something else you can go deal with. That's, that's awful. I like most men did not really take care of my skin at all until pff, a couple of months ago. Really? Like, I think it was around Christmas time. Uh, my wife was offering to get me something for Christmas, some sort of skincare routine. And I told her, fine, good plan. Makes sense. Hang on, hang on. So, so did she, did she like outright say it and be like, so I'm noticing a little decline and I need to step in to make sure this doesn't go any further. She's, she's either much more <laughs> subtle than that, or, uh, or it was just a coincidence where she was ordering stuff and was like, Hey, do you give a shit? And I was like, sure. I'll give a shit, but here's my rule. If there are more than two steps, I'm out. Don't get me three bottles. Don't get me nine bottles. If, if I've got to spend 45 minutes doing shit to my face, I'm just going to get old. It's fine. That's part of the process. So two bottles, that's it. Of course, three bottles showed up and I only used two of them, but that's, that's just me. Well, that's, that's what guys do, right? Right, right. Don't read the instructions and just figure it out on your own and go, oh, there's extra parts. I wonder what those are for. Yeah, exactly. What's, uh, what's that third bottle? I don't, know, I don't know. Who's got time? So the other interesting thing, my daughter started picking on me because she was like, dad, you have pimples on your forehead. And it was not pimples. It was like, every time I got out of the shower and took a hot shower, like my forehead had like red marks on it. It was just mm. dry skin. I was like, what the, what the fuck is going on now? <laughs> Interestingly enough, my ex-wife introduced me to a store called Lush years ago. This is, which, this is where my stuff came from. Lush is the best. I, I know. I get a headache whenever I go in the store. Oh, me like, too. There's too many smells. Yeah. But I really do. They've got a, a cream called vanishing cream and an, I got that and was yeah. like, it's a little itty bitty tub and it's like $50. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, but that actually works wonders. And like I was just using it on my forehead and saw the difference. And now it's like, I slather it all over my face every night. So yeah, I, I wish Lush was a sponsor of the show because their stuff is great. It's, it's what I use uh, myself. But this whole conversation, we, we almost didn't even have the skincare conversation. We had considered maybe doing something, sort of dismissed the idea. And then randomly, I hear from my brother, I'm just having a conversation with him. And he's telling me about all the skincare stuff that he was doing. And I was like, well, wait a minute. If he's doing something and I'm starting to do something, maybe Zach's starting to do something. Maybe we should do something about this. So I had to share my brother's story, though, because I think it is a very common one. So I asked him to share what happened to him when he started taking care of his own face. I've spent my entire life not washing my face, not using any kind of lotion of any sort, uh, and never thought this is something I would really consider until you, my much, 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 much older brother, 
And much more handsome. And much more handsome. Started washing your face with something because of something you heard on some ding dong podcast. So what what happened? Why did you decide to start giving a shit about the way your face looks? <laughs> well, uh, for a few reasons. I heard on a few podcasts. They're all older guys. They're my age. I'm I'm almost gonna be fifty. So that's Jesus. I know. I'm, that's my next birthday. But listening to some other uh, middle-aged celebrities, Rob Lowe is one of them. He's um, famously handsome. Mm -hmm. And and he talks about, you know, people say, like, how do you do it on his show? And he would say, well, you know, he does have a, some products mm -hmm. that, he, that he makes or whatever, you know, that he sells. But, you know, I, I still believe that he has had a process over the years, right? So he knows what to put on his face. Also, his wife is a makeup artist for celebrities. So, so I, I at least trust that he knows what he's talking about. I'm sure, maybe he's selling some product, but, and then um, some other guys, one of them's Jason Bateman. They have a podcast. They were talking about stuff that mm -hmm. they put on their face. So, yeah. and they're all like my age. I mean, Rob Lowe's a little bit older. So I was like, you know what? It's never too late to start. Right. <laughs> so, or and, is it? Or is it? <laughs> um, you got to be careful because, uh, so yeah, I went into the store and, and actually my, my friend who, who looks great and has been doing this, she, she just said, why don't you just try sunscreen? Right. Like right. just do that. And right. I was like, uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, hearing these, I looked at Rob Lowe's website and, or his, for his products and he had all this stuff. So I was like, but it was way expensive, right? So I'm like, right. well, I'll just get these things, but at Target. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right. So I went into Target and um, I decided, okay, I'm going to get a face scrub. So because it's in a brown container here, it means it's for men. Sure, of and course. It's called yeah. Every Man Jack. So it, it's for man. Yes. Right? It's not a woman's thing. So I got that. And then um, I also said sunscreen is good, but I, ha I remember... Because when I was a teenager, I did have uh, retinol. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's supposed to do something for skin. Right. So that I, must be good. I've heard of it before. And it's called, this is the most important thing. Well, one, it says men on it, right? So don't right. forget it. Clearly, it actually has men. So on there, uh, age fighter. It's called age fighter. So I'm And at your advancing age, age, that's very important. I want that. I want to fight <laughs> that because I'm almost 50. And, it, and then, so I got that and then I was like, uh, oh, but you know, what I really, what makes me look the oldest is my eyes, right? It's like, they're a little puffy and they've sure. got some wrinkles. So I got L'Oreal's Revitalift eye cream. And this one's clearly not for men. Clearly not. But I, but I got it anyway. Sure. So I came home and I washed my face with my face scrub. And then, um, I put on my age fighter. And then I, and then for bedtime, I put on my eye cream and then I, I went to bed and I did this morning and twice a day in uh -huh. the morning, washed my face, put on the age fighter, did the eye cream. Then at night, just washed my face and did the eye cream. So, um, did that for like two or three days. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> oh man, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I was not, I looked as old as ever because something went wrong. <laughs> I wasn't sure what it was, but my face was swollen. It was very, very dry. It burned to the, well, not even to the touch, without touch. It right. burned. Just existing. And my, and my eyes were totally puffy and swollen. Oh, my God. And I was like, this is so ironic because I'm trying to look young. And now I look, I'm like, I may have done permanent damage. I mean, who knows? Right? Like, this is crazy. So, yeah, my face was puffy and swollen, and I looked bad. And not only that, I felt bad. It was kind of painful. Um, and so I stopped everything. Yeah. And, um, and you haven't looked back. Haven't looked back. No. <laughs> uh, then I decided to do Cause you know this Jeremy, but people listening probably don't know this. I, I am a scientist. Obviously. Obviously. So I decided <laughs> to, instead of introducing all three things at once, mm -hmm. I would try one at a time and see what the thing was that burned me to, to death. <laughs> right. So I stopped for like three or four days. I didn't do anything. I just went back to being the old, um, you know, basically a, a sailor from 1880 <laughs> on the seas, the, treating myself. And so then I introduced one thing at a time. So I actually, I just went, I abandoned everything, but the good old fashioned Neutrogena, Altashir, Broad Spectrum 55. So just, so just the sunscreen. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, um, 
it's dry touch so it, it's not so oily so it's nice for the face like yeah you wouldn't put this on your whole body because it's it's expensive so i just i've been doing this mostly but then i slowly introduced the revital lift because mm -hmm. to be honest i know this show is about self-care and it just felt good to do this nice like at night putting this on my eyes i was like hey i'm even if it doesn't do anything i'm right it feels like i'm taking care of myself right Although how and that's telling, that's yeah. so important and in, in all of this right. it's just like taking that time to take care of yourself yeah so this just felt good i mean it could have i could have been putting uh, mud or whatever. I mean, it didn't have to, it was just right. an act of applying. It felt good. So, and you are just putting it on your eyes. <laughs> just my eyes. Yes. <laughs> it does say external use only. So I have to be careful. Right. Right. <laughs> but, um, and the other thing I kept telling myself is no matter what there's, I'm not going to look better. I'm just <laughs> going to look old slower. Right. Exactly. At best case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not going to put 10 years back on your face. It's no. going to keep the next 10 from looking like 20. Right. Yes. Maybe if I'm lucky. Right. right. So in, anyway, it wasn't the eye cream that was burning my face. Oh, so, so what was it? Which was good. Um, well then I I'm guessing it was the age fighter okay. because, um, it has retinol. And when I was a teenager and had something with retinol in, even though you're telling me there was maybe different types of retinol, but it, it also burned my face when I was a kid. So I'm guessing it was the age fighter with retinol. So yeah. So that's my journey so far. I would say, yeah, always good advice is just the sunscreen. Just make sure you do that. Even in the winter, even if you just did that, I think you're ahead of the game. I burned that <laughs> motherfucker off. It was like fire. So Jeremy, I got to come out and tell you another secret of mine about my, my skincare. I was convinced the other day to go to a beauty bar mm. and get a pedicure. I asked my friend, like, do other guys do this? She's oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah, sure, totally. There, there's always guys there. There was no other of guy. Of course, there. there was no guy. There was no, no other guy there. No. And when I walked in the door, I felt like I was walking into a saloon in the <laughs> 1800s because everyone turned around and looked at me. Huh? Like, mm, what's he doing here? He's lost. Um, what's he doing here? But I got like the top of the line pedicure, which like included a foot massage and all of that. Nice. So of course, like I couldn't find my flip flops before I went. Mm -hmm. So I had to wear sneakers to get oh, a pedicure. Geez. Yeah. And like, I had to put socks back on and I'm not kidding. Like I went to put my socks on. I was like, oh, these are going to be hard to put on because my feet feel wet. Right. They were not wet. They were just silky smooth. Nice. It Worth every wonderful. penny. Worth every penny. It was nice. And I actually think I'm going to go back on a weekly basis. Weekly? Jeez. Maybe. We'll see. If I can get through the, uh, everyone looking at me when I walk in the door. I'll go back weekly. <laughs> well, once you become the regular, then yeah. Oh, hey, it's old stinky feet, Zach. No, yeah, no, no, no. It's going to be something closer to, oh, it's that creepy old guy again. All right. Here comes the perv again. Exactly. Um, but I am learning in my old age that I have to take care of my skin. Getting a pedicure for my feet was taking care of my skin. The moisturizer on my face is taking care of my skin. The other thing that we can do to take care of our skin is to make sure that we have all the nutrients that we need. That's why I started taking athletic greens. I started taking athletic greens because I really needed to have a supplement that tasted great, gave me all the things that I needed. And I didn't want to have to take 10 pills a day or spend all of my time cooking all the meals. I try and get my nutrients from food, but let's face it, we don't get everything we need every day from food. So Athletic Greens was a great solution for me. It tastes great. It gives me everything I need for more energy, better gut health, optimized immune system. It has less than a gram of sugar, and there's no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and it actually does taste good. And for what you get, it's less than $3 a day. And right now is the time to incorporate better health, and Athletic Greens is a perfect start. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash fit mess. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash fit mess to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. That link will be on the show notes and it's plastered all over our website at thefitmess.com. Okay, so we men especially need some help in this area. So we invited Chris Gibson on the show. He's a skincare expert. He's author of Acne Free in Three Days and host of the Chris Gibson Live Show on YouTube. We started by asking him why skincare is so important. Your skin's got to last you. 
till you are not here anymore. And it doesn't always work out that way for a lot of people that, you know, over the years, sun damage, toxins, maybe too much sugar in the diet, maybe lifestyle was a little wild. It just kind of ignored the skin. And then we end up with things like skin tags, skin cancers, moles that are growing and skin tears. So part of the whole skin health thing is that that's your largest organ on your body. It protects you, uh, protects the internal stuff from external problems and it protects you from the environment. And so the healthier your skin and the different layers that compose it are, the better and less trouble you're going to have getting through your later years. Now, you know, there's skin conditions that start early. That's what happened to me, like acne. That's how I got into all this in the first place. But the skin is usually a barometer of health. And it's also very resilient and it can repair itself given the opportunity. So it's an amazing time to be in skincare because there's a whole lot of technology that's being used now, like red light therapies, uh, ultrasound, radio frequency therapy, things that go far beyond what a topical product could do, but at the same time are not a surgery or not invasive. So, you know, everybody got you get bored with this. You've been doing this for 34 years and I'm like, God, it's always changing and we're always learning something. So it's exciting to help people because now there are solutions that if someone has issues with skincare products and their ingredients, if they have very sensitive skin and just everything bothers them, there are now some alternatives that you can do that don't require a topical product at all. So that's, it's kind of, I think in the future, um, and maybe getting ahead of myself right now, but I think in the future, the topical products that we see are going to be the secondary part of your routine versus the primary. I think the primary is going to be some of these red light therapies, um, home laser therapy, things like that. I mean, you can now take off moles and skin tags with a pin that you can use. It used to cost hundreds of dollars to go to the doctor to do that. You can do it at home. That's amazing. So it's really changed a lot. I bet. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. You mentioned uh, that acne got you into this. And it, 34 years you've been doing this, which is shocking because you only look about 34, which is uh, uh, Ooh, not amazing. Even close. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. So let's not hear your story a little bit. What, what got you into this? Yeah, I had really... Uh, well, two things. I had acne as a child, which is not unusual as of itself, although it started pretty early for me. I had really oily skin and I had problems early on that were not responding to antibiotics or anything like that. The topical products were, were bothering me. They're drying up my skin, but causing more issues. So I really struggled with it. And they tell you, you'll grow out of it. <laughs> So you sort of hang on to that. Okay, well, maybe when I'm 18 or 19, this will right. kind of go away. And the other thing that there were members in my family that had had that had severe scarring. So the primary focus for my parents and the dermatologist that I was seeing was to prevent scarring. Mm -hmm. That was really the big thing. It wasn't so much to try to clear it up, although that was obviously part of it. So when that kept happening and I got in my in my early 20s and I was getting the same thing when I went to the dermatologist well here's a prescription for you know antibiotics and we can do some TCA peels they didn't have laser therapies in the 80s and early 90s like we do now and then dermabrasion was the other alternative which uh, is very invasive it's sort of where they sand your skin down mm -hmm. to make sure they remove any the, really the outer layers and you just sort of start over so I took Accutane which came out in 1982 twice um, scheduled for a third time, I decided not to do it. And that's when I started digging into what is going on here. This is crazy. Why me? You know, why do yeah. I still have this issue? So no internet. So I had to haul myself to the library and then to herbal stores and sort of work my way through the process of learning how my diet was impacting it, how skincare ingredients were impacting it. And which didn't even look anything close to at the time, the medical profession professionals approach to that problem <laughs> i was like i went on a to make a long story short i went on a fast took all the food out of my diet for three days almost four days and it went away it stopped wow and not only did the the skin issue the new breakout stop the old breakouts cleared up the red marks that i had that are typical of people that have that ongoing situation were gone mm -hmm. so 
I was fascinated and it became a subject that I really dove into and I still worked in the corporate world at the same time. So, so I had two kind of things going on at the same time, not that unusual really. And then I wrote a book about it in 2002 first and then uh, it kind of went crazy because yeah. it was something that a lot of people recognized that in them. They had had those same issues. Yeah. So I reached a whole lot of people here in the U.S. and Canada which is how I got on TV. Canada is how I got on TV, but, but also outside the U S is a big problem. And, and a lot of countries were behind in the medical science still and in diet. And you could see as the Western diet sort of took over and more and more refined sugars made it into diets and milks and cheeses that were treated with hormones were affecting more and more people. Their skin was reacting to that. So it was a big deal. And I got on television because of that book and it was just like a perfect storm. There was MRSA came out, the thing with overuse of antibiotics, which is something I was already talking about. Mm -hmm. Probiotics, I was already talking about that. So here was all of this stuff coming out and new products. And I had been, you know, wheeling and dealing that for 15 years. So <laughs> I got to go on television, talk a lot about it. And then of course, even then it was the fact that the way, the way I looked, I mean, that just, you know, at 40, when I was sitting in the room waiting on the producer to come get me, they would always be shocked mm -hmm. that I didn't look 40. Yeah. Um, and those videos are on my YouTube channel. People go back and look at them and go <laughs> like 20 then. Right. Um, so <laughs> So I, I try to help people solve what I call the skincare conundrum. And that is because it is the market is so oversaturated. There's a new celebrity driven skincare line every month. Somebody comes out with something to cash in on that. And it really does come down to ingredients in the products and their effectiveness for you and your skin type. Mm -hmm. So no one product is going to work for every single person. And I try to teach people that patience is the order of the day, just like weight loss. Skin takes time to repair itself. If you're working on, so let's say, anti-aging wrinkles, collagen mm -hmm. building, that's going to take a while. Collagen yeah. takes months to form and it has to move up through the skin. That's how our skin works. It starts way down and moves up. The cells move upward and mm -hmm. outward. So patience, you know, and a lot of people will spend a lot of money yeah. uh, on products and then toss them after like a week or yeah. two weeks. So I try to help people navigate all of that. And it, and it truly, the, the YouTube channel started kind of as an acne resource, just because that's what I was known for. And then when I started talking about how old I was, <laughs> people were like, okay, that's in the YouTube in YouTube dumb. I'm a weird kind of outlier because I'm a guy talking about skincare yeah. over 50. But it's interesting because there are some very common things, um, but there are also some really unique things that go on with people and their health that preclude them using skincare products. So I've dealt with people that have had cancer that can't be exposed to certain chemicals and um, try to help them figure out what to use and what not to use. And so there's a really wide range of folks that watch my stuff. Sure. It's crazy. I want to jump in on the part about you being the outlier, being a, a guy talking about skincare, because I do nothing to take care of my skin. My brother does nothing. He just started a skincare routine and was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing and my face is on fire. So <laughs> What is it? What Not is it about guys? Are, are guys just inherently lazy? Is there something that happens well, to us growing up? Like, why don't guys care? Well, culturally, it hasn't been really impressed on guys, which is unfortunate because if you look at skin cancer, obviously men get it way more often than women do. We're outdoors a lot more, play sports outside, and, and that was not pushed. The only reason I did it is because it was part of what I needed to do to, to have clear skin. So mm -hmm. I kind of got lucky in that way. But I, I think that, you know, it's just never been a part of the conversation. I have guys still using dish soap for shower wash and <laughs> washing their face with that. And so, or some just use cold water, um, shaving, shaving to some degree gets you by a little cause you you're exfoliating your skin when you use the razor. Sure. Uh, but what happens is, as guys, just like anybody else, when they get into their late 30s and 40s, they go, what the 
just happening to my skin because that's when all that stuff starts to show up. Yeah. So usually the guys I get are they're guys in their 40s and 50s. They've either gone and had skin cancers removed or they are not happy with their leathery looking skin now mm-hmm. or their wives aren't mm-hmm. or their significant other isn't. And they are youthful components, people's children and younger guys are more apt to get it. So the conversation inside the household start, you know, switch when my son's using all this stuff and I never used all this stuff. And it's good. Right. You, know, or, you know, so, um, and there are, there are some inherent differences between men's skin and women's skin. Guys come with a little more collagen, a little more elastin, so a little more resiliency to the effects of the elements. But in the end, the aging process of skin is the same for everybody. As sun damage accumulates, DNA gets screwed up in a cell, and then suddenly you have an age spot or hyperpigmentation or mm-hmm. a growth of some kind, and you're in a hurry to try to reverse all of that. I think guys have always sort of gotten the exfoliation thing. Guys are more likely to have the scrubs, you know, mm-hmm. which are not always great. Uh, depends on how they're made. But when it came to like hydration for your skin, sun protection for the skin replacing things that we produce less of as we get older like peptides all of that stuff is still pretty foreign to a lot of guys but it's getting better i mean the skincare companies are formulating skincare lines just for men that smell like guy stuff and don't smell flowery or perfumey and and i'm not a big fan of fragrance of any kind anyway Mm -hmm. um not knowing what your brother's skin type is or what he's going through but my guess is he went all in on something mm-hmm. uh, t- too much at once. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it. <laughs> you know, yeah. Usually, I re- I tell people start with a good cleanser, get that going, and a moisturizer, so that you have that going, and making sure you use a sunscreen, and that for a month or two is going to help. And then you can look and see what specific things are you trying to address. If someone attacks their skin with a bunch of stuff, it's going to react. The way it's supposed to, which is dermatitis. That's what that is. Mm. Stingy, red, breaky, small, tiny bumps. That's all too much, too quick yeah. for your skin to adjust to. It has to acclimate. Yeah. You mentioned sunscreen a couple of times. Uh, depending on which corners of the internet you hang out in, some people will tell you it is toxic and it will kill you faster than any uh, sun exposure yeah. ever will. And then others say you can't put enough on. So how... And I, and I, I want to run around the internet with a thing as a whack-a-mole <laughs> and hit those people over the head. What do we do? How do we uh, navigate sunscreen? So, so, so there is some truth, as we know, and there's a root or kernel of truth in everything. uh uh-huh. So let's dissect this really quickly. Sunscreen is necessary because it helps your skin protect itself against UVA, UVB light, and long wave light, which is the light that comes through a window or through your car and damages your skin. You can take a look. I tell people, take a look at your butt and look at the skin on your butt because that's for most people been covered their entire lives and look at the skin that's been exposed, your neck, your chest, your face, your arms, your hands. That is sun damage. That's okay. not aging because your butt age just like everything else. Sure. That's sun damage. <laughs> so when I people do that, they go, wow, wow. And I go, that's why it's important. So I don't like chemical sunscreens. This is that kernel of truth. There are chemicals like octanoxate and oxybenzene. And there are a lot of chemicals that can be hormone disruptive in certain individuals, can be absorbed in the blood are harmful for our coral reefs and our ocean sea life. So I'm a big proponent of non-chemical or mineral sunscreens. The problem with mineral sunscreens has always been that they were greasy and white, give a white cast all over Mm -hmm. your skin, the darker your skin, the worse it looked. But now we have evolved these sunscreens where we have blends with avabenzone, which is not one of the chemicals that gets absorbed. It's still a chemical but it'll be mixed with the zinc so that there's less of that, but you're still getting the reflective protection and the chemical protection. That's those blends. And then we have the full out zinc and uh, titanium oxide sunscreens. And those particular ones are all reflective, but now they've learned how to formulate them with other ingredients and slight amount of tint or makeup or pigment so that they don't look really white. And then there's sunscreen clothing that you can wear. Sure. Uh, that's long sleeves, hats, gloves, 
So if you really can't take the sunscreen, you really don't like it, or you're one of those people that it's going to kill you, uh, <laughs> use the clothing. And I don't care if you sit under an umbrella, you need to protect your skin. Even with the diligence that I have had, I have more photo aging on this side of my body than I do on this side because we drive on sure. the right side of the road. Yeah. So you know, the left side of my body has been exposed no matter which direction you're going yeah. on this continent you're exposed so i have more visible photo aging even i don't have a lot but there is some more on this side than this side so interesting even with sunscreen um wow. the other reason is that sunscreen doesn't just protect your skin it also allows your skin to take the energy that it would use normally to try to protect itself from the sun and apply it to the general health of your skin which is cellular reproduction collagen production uh, last and rebuilding. So when you, energy is an inflammation is taken away from that, it's able to work other places. So it actually can help reverse some of the aging that you have from the sun damage when you use sunscreen. And you're saying year round, whether it's December or July sunscreen every day, where you live, you know, there's, I hate to say this, I don't need to get in trouble. If you look and I've lived all over our country, I've lived you know, every I've Texas, the Southeast, I'm in Florida now, I lived in Pennsylvania and the Northeast for a long time. And there was the idea in the Northeast that you didn't need to wear sunscreen in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at the aging population, they have this really hard weathered look mm. about their skin in general. Mm -hmm. And that is because the photo aging happens, whether it's the only time it's not happening is when it's dark. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when the sun is gone and it's nighttime, you are not getting any UV radiation. So, you know, it's important to wear it all the time. You don't need SPF 50. That's ridiculous. I don't like 50s they're too thick. They're too greasy. They're too expensive. They're irritating. If you get them in your eyes, uh, an SPF of 30, mm -hmm. 25, is still really okay. You just have to remember to reapply it more often, but a, an SPF of 30 is going to be fine for all, just about everybody. You just have to be mindful to use it. We have for the women who wear makeup and the reapplication is an issue. There are now translucent powder sunscreens, like a setting powder where they can put that over their cosmetics with a little brush mm -hmm. and it doesn't mess anything up and still protect their skin. So I was, it's I was, very important. I was curious about that, the application part. The Is there a difference whether it's a spray on or, or more your traditional like tube of whatever? Just making sure that you know, even with spray on, you still have to massage the material into this upper layer of the skin. Sure. So so I think I, co I think I covered the whole thing with that. It's, there is some truth to the issues with sunscreens uh, and certain chemicals. I don't like them. I don't use them. But at the same token, the whole thing about if you use sunscreen, you're never going to create vitamin D and it's going to kill you. That's ridiculous. There's no study out there. And I've read them all that ever correlated that we get enough of that in our meals, whether you're a vegetarian or whether you eat meat, it does our fish or whatever plant material. If your doctor diagnoses you with a vitamin D deficiency, you can take a supplement. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather take a supplement than get skin cancer. So I'm always going to be the whack the, with the baseball bat going dink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned red light therapy. We've talked about that a little bit on the show. The people that we've talked to that, that preach red light therapy mentioned the idea of getting up and, and sort of being with the sun early in the morning, like a, a sun exposure to in at sunrise, that sort of thing. Where do you come down on this? Is there a way to sort of train I, I your skin? All right. Yeah. I think you're going to get some sun aging, no matter what you do, if you do that. However, the low angle of the sun is the sunlight's, <laughs> It's one of those things, sunlight is beneficial to your body in some ways. Obviously we live on the surface. We're not, you know, we don't live underground or underwater. So your, your body can handle a certain amount of sun exposure. It's got its own natural resources uh, to deal with that. It, it's one of those things that just, a person's gonna have to realize there, it, there's pros and cuts like exercise. You know, people that, that are athletic and exercise way, way a lot create a lot more oxidation and free radicals and they tend to look older even mm. though they may be in better shape mm -hmm. than a moderate exerciser so to me that's moderate sunlight and if you're going to do that just you know you run the risk of some photo aging but it's certainly not going to be like somebody who laid out at the beach their sure. whole life and never used sunscreen you mentioned exercise i know uh, you preach that and nutrition is a big part of a skincare routine what do we need to know about uh, combining 
nutrition and exercise to take care of our skin. Well, yeah, there have been some studies that came out in October, which tell the story, which which most of us already know. And then that was that you could reverse biological aging by adding in modern exercise uh, and some changes in your diet. And not a surprise, right? (laughs) Um, Modern exercise being walking, swimming, playing with the dog, you know, not being sedentary, at least getting 20 to 30 minutes, 45 is better. An hour is awesome of just light activity where you're moving, you know, gardening, all that stuff fits mm-hmm. that. You don't have to go run marathons, but what it does is it helps your cells produce healthier cells. We're basically a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy as we get older. So the better we take care of ourselves and our body and its functions, and the more we do to enhance that, the younger we're going to look and feel biologically. So there were studies that came out, independent study, no pharmaceutical companies involved. Nobody had anything in it, except they just wanted to see what the difference was mm. in test individuals. Diet, same thing, making sure that you get the full range of nutrients that, that you need. And if you can't get it from your food, making sure you supplement that. Mm-hmm. Vitamin K2 is a big thing right now, finally. <laughs> should have been a bigger thing longer ago. We hear about vitamin K1 and blood clotting and that sort of thing. K2 is harder to get. You almost always have to get it in a supplement. But what it does is it helps the body regulate and move calcium around. So it keeps that out of your arteries and keeps it in your bones and in your brain cells and in your skin cells where it needs to be. So especially for women uh, who suffer more bone loss than men do, a very important nutrient. Of course, when we're talking nutrients like that, you need to talk to your doctor if you're on medications that could be a problem uh, because K's do have clotting ability. So if you're on blood thinners, you wouldn't want to go out and start taking a bunch of vitamin K2 with D3 without talking to your doctor first. However, for the general population and for most of us, it has been shown to really make a big difference in the aging process of the skin as far as the photo aging process, lines and wrinkles, sagging, those type typical uh, signs of aging do respond well to vitamin K2 therapy. That's spider veins, which is telangiectasia. What a pretty name. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it helps with those. Um, it, it, it just, it's very helpful and it's in very little supply in our, in our food. Okay. So it's, it's one of those things you have to kind of try to go get. And then of course, I tested collagen peptides, a lot of controversy over that. Everything's a controversy these days, but Mm -hmm. collagen peptides are just amino acids. They're not actual collagen. And what happens when you take those, whether it's in your tea or coffee or what have you, it helps replace the ones you're deficient in. So people that are having brittle nails, hair, the typical things we hear, skin issues, often will get relief from those. People with joint problems. I know my mom, even uh, years ago when she was having those issues, the doctors had her on chondroitin and the collagen peptides, and it helped with her arthritis and her joint health. Um, So again, it's one of those things, if you're only going to get the benefit of the amino acid you're deficient in, it's not going to be some miracle thing and it takes time. My test was eight weeks. It generally, I did get some benefit from it that I was able to report on, but the benefits really start to show up three, four, five, and six months out. And that's just how our body works. Is there a, a vegetarian way to, uh, to get, uh, obviously you can't get collagen, yeah. but how do you, how do, you well, do that as a vegetarian? Yeah, there are plant-based collagens. There are plant-based stem cells and marine. If, if it depends on the type of vegetarian, sure. I can't ever say it. You know, what I mean. the type <laughs> of diet you're following, yeah. there are marine collagen. Okay. Uh, peptides. So again, it's amino acids. Mm -hmm. Um, They're easier gotten from animals because we produce them. Hydrolyzed, it's usually from bovine or cows, but you can get other versions of that. It's just, you have to kind of do some research and read the labels very carefully because some of the things that they sell are supposedly going to help you produce the collagen peptides rather than actually be an amino acid that you're missing. So you have to really read the fine print as we do on anything anymore to make sure that you know what you're doing. But yeah, there are, there are versions that are plant 
based. So, based. so we're exercising better. We're wearing sunscreen. We're getting the nutrition we need. Uh, now it's time to actually put something on my face, some sort of a topical, some other, maybe the, the red light therapy, whatever it is. Where do you recommend people start? What should we look for on those labels to make sure we're not doing something harmful? Okay. I'm glad you put it that way because it's much easier to avoid things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if the list is shorter, <laughs> uh, you know, denatured alcohol is very drying. That's different than when you see an ester, ester alcohol. Though, if you see alcohols that say that um, those are fatty alcohols, which are good for your skin. So it's the denatured alcohol, sulfites, sulfates. Those are surficants that we find in detergents that can strip the skin of too much oil. Fragrance, we don't, I know in the US, we don't know what's in our fragrance because the FDA says, well, this is fragrance. That's all they have to say. So you can usually suppose that that's synthetic, uh, but even essential oils be a problem for some people. So I usually recommend it for everyone that has sensitive skin to try to stay away from any kind of fragrance, whether it's essential oil or synthetic or what have you. Fragrance free is definitely the way to go. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, there usually where this rolls into is the question, well, then what do I actually really need? So you need a good face wash for your skin type. If you have oily skin, then you want a clarifying, clear foaming face wash to help lift off that extra oil. If you have dry or normal skin, you want to use a creamy type face wash, maybe something with borage oil or something, you know, glycerin based, oatmeal based, so that you get the cleansing, but you don't dry your skin out more. And then you want to use a good vitamin C serum. And there are two types of those. One is an L ascorbic acid, which is unstable, which is in a lot of the products that we hear about, like the ordinary is a big thing right now. They're 23% suspension. So L ascorbic acid, vitamin C serums are going to be stronger. So if you have sensitive skin, you want to choose a sodium ascorbyl phosphate. And that will be listed on there. Usually a sensitive skin product will not be L ascorbic acid, but vitamin C helps speed up cellular turnover, helps correct some of the damage that's happened in the cells from the sunlight, helps even and disperse out melanin. So you get rid of age spots and hyperpigmentation and just kind of gives your skin an overall even bright look. Very important. Peptides, as I said, peptides for skin come in a, in a topical. Uh, we produce less of them as we get older. Um, if you have dry skin, things like squalane and um, Matrixyl 3000, which is a peptide blend. It's usually in products like the Inky List is one I talk about. I really like theirs. That helps hydrate the skin. The skin cells are actually able to use that and it helps produce collagen. And then of course the king of them all when it comes to topicals that we have not replaced is retinol, which is another controversial item because it's vitamin A derivative. That's a retinoid all the way from prescription strength retin A or tretinoin all the way down to your retinol moisturizers. And so the reason those are important is over the long term, they do help reverse sun damage. They've done biopsies on humans, not animals, where people who have used those a year to a year and a half have seen a thickening of the collagen layer in their skin. So it's very helpful to get patients and you have to acclimate to it. So the skin has to get used to that. The way quickly for people who are listening, the way retinols work, tretinoin and your retinol moisturizer say retinol with an O, O-L. They go through a conversion process on your skin. So when you apply them, they turn into retinaldehyde. Then the retinaldehyde turns into retinoic acid, which is actually what your body uses. So the reason you can't just put retinoic acid on your skin is it goes rancid and gets bad very quickly. So we have to use these other vehicles. If you get retinol to hide, which you can now get in a serum form, you're skipping that one conversion. And for people with sensitive skin, that seems to be very helpful. So it seems to be that conversion process that happens from the retinoin or retinol into retinaldehyde and then into retinoic acid, all of that chemical changing happening on the skin, some people's skin goes, whoa, what is this? And reacts to it. Yeah. So that's helpful. And then we have bakuchiol, which is an oil that can give you similar benefits to retinol without any of the side effects. So it does a similar thing to the cells. So there's a lot of things, and that's new. That's a newer thing that we're learning alternatives to some of these products. So really comes down to you and your skin and your skin type and trying stuff. I always tell people to patch test everything on the inner arm, the inner elbow before you put it on your face, (laughs) because that's easier to treat. I hope my brother's listening. I hope Aaron, are you listening? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you've not used a product before, ingredients before, or you change brands and the formulation is different, you need to patch test. So if it's a moisturizer, you just put it on, leave it on. If it is a skin peel or some sort of treatment that would be washed off, you would follow those directions and wait 48 hours to make sure nothing goes on with your skin. If it doesn't, you're fine. Uh, it sounds a lot more complicated than the dish soap and uh, cold water routine that some of your yeah, clients have. Yeah, which is exactly uh, why so many people still do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Lots of great advice here. Chris, where can we learn more about you and uh, your channel and all you have to offer? Yeah, clearly the YouTube channel is the best resource because there's a four or, or 400 videos. So basically you can go to YouTube and type in Chris Gibson and a skin issue and a, my videos pop up. And there it is. So it's really nice. And then, of course, my blog is called Skin So Fabulous. You can just Google that. You just put that in the bar and it comes right up. It's the only, only thing called that on the internet right now. <laughs> uh, but all of my contact information is on the YouTube channel in the video descriptions and on the about. So it's not hard to find. Me. And it we'll, used to be, but it's not anymore. <laughs> nice. Well, we'll have links to all of that in the show notes for this episode right. as well. Chris, thanks so much for your time today and, and your insights. I really sure. appreciate your time. That was Chris Gibson, author of Acne Free in Three Days and host of Chris Gibson Live on YouTube. You can find all of those links in the show notes for this episode at thefitmess.com. Lots of great takeaways from that interview and even from my brother, as it turns out. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. If you do nothing else that was talked about in this show, including getting a pedicure. Wear a sunscreen, dummy. Like that, It's like the simplest thing you can do. And, and by the way, I will say I'm talking to myself here because I fucking hate putting on sunscreen. Not for any like reason that it's dangerous or going to kill you or what, just the process, right? Like if it's not in a spray can that I can spray it on and walk away, fuck the time and the, oh, did I rub it in all the way? No, this takes a long, like any, for me, anything where there's prep involved, it just, it just is a nightmare. But this is something that is important that you got to do. So wear the sunscreen if you do nothing else. You know, it's really interesting. Like this episode is really making me think that you're just lazy. Oh, I'm very lazy. You know? Yeah. The less I can do, the better. That's really what it comes down to. You know, there's been no other episode where like you're just complaining about, oh, I got to do two things. Yeah. Ugh. Because it's- I mean, like- God Because forbid. it's not important. It's not important to me, right? Like if my knee hurts, suddenly it's a priority. I, you know, I think I look pretty good. I'm doing all right for 45. So when I look in the mirror, I'm not thinking, oh, I need some skin, some skincare on there. So it's just, it, it's one of those things where I should be doing now what I will wish I did in 10 years. Wow. I mean, based on all this, I'm surprised you eat. Like <laughs> I have to, I have to spoon the food into it. I have to put the, the food onto a spoon and put it in my mouth and chew and swallow. It's too many steps. Oh no, I've, I got that cut down to like three steps. Too many. <laughs> All right. But the next point though, like don't wait until you're 45 to give a shit about your skin. I mean, I'm giving myself credit because I got in early. Yeah. 42. Yeah. Right. I started carrying Young whippersnapper. But seriously, like don't wait until it's a problem. Just like start doing little things that will help you along the way. Cause someday you're going to be old. Personally, I'd, ra I'd rather not have the leathery skin. Exactly. Uh, and the last one, and again, I'm talking to myself here, so listen in if you like, but read the fucking labels on that shit. You might need an advanced degree to know what you're looking at, or you're going to need to Google it, or maybe just ask your partner because they probably already know what they're doing because they've been doing this for 10 years. But you got to know what's in that stuff before you just smear it all over your face. And now that we've just spent the last half hour talking about putting cream on our face, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, no, now? Now you're uncomfortable. <laughs> Welcome to 45 minutes ago. <laughs> It takes a little while for my discomfort to build up. I think that's what gets me in trouble a lot is like shit comes out of my mouth. I don't realize that sh I should be uncomfortable until uh -huh. well after I've said things. And, and they've been published for all the internet to hear. Yeah, I'm okay with that though. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Well, speaking of shit coming out of your mouths, don't let the conversation end there. Join us in our Facebook group where you and fellow FitMess listeners can connect for monthly challenges, accountability to reach your goals, and connection with others who are on a similar journey. That's going to do it for this week. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next week at thefitmess.com. See everyone. We know this podcast is amazing and doesn't seem to lack anything, but we need a legal disclaimer. Prior to implementing anything discussed in this podcast, it is your responsibility to conduct your own research and consult your physician. You should assume that Jeremy and Zach don't know what they're talking about, and they're not liable for any physical or emotional issues that occur directly or indirectly from listening to this podcast.